Critical thinking is the objective analysis of facts to form a judgment. The subject is complex, and several different definitions exist, which generally include the rational, skeptical, unbiased analysis, or evaluation of factual evidence. Critical thinking is self-directed, self-disciplined, self-monitored, and self-corrective thinking. It presupposed assent to rigorous standards of excellence and mindful command to their use. It entails effective communication and problem-solving abilities, as well as a commitment to overcome our native egocentrism and sociocentrism. History The earliest documentation of critical thinking are the teachings of Socrates recorded by Plato. Socrates established the fact that one cannot depend upon those in authority to have sound knowledge and insight. He demonstrated that persons may have power and high position and yet be deeply confused and irrational. He established the importance of asking deep questions that probe profoundly into thinking before we accept ideas as worthy of belief. He established the importance of seeking evidence, closely examining reasoning and assumptions, analyzing basic concepts, and tracing out implications not only of what is said but of what is done as well. His method of questioning is now known as Socratic questioning and is the best known critical thinking teaching strategy. In his mode of questioning, Socrates highlighted the need for thinking for clarity and logical consistency. Socrates asked people questions to reveal their irrational thinking or lack of reliable knowledge. Socrates demonstrated that having authority does not ensure accurate knowledge. He established the method of questioning beliefs, closely inspecting assumptions and relying on evidence and sound rationale. Plato recorded Socrates' teachings and carried on the tradition of critical thinking. Aristotle and subsequent Greek skeptics refined Socrates' teachings, using systematic thinking and asking questions to ascertain the true nature of reality beyond the way things appear from a glance. Socrates set the agenda for the tradition of critical thinking, namely, to reflectively question common beliefs and explanations, carefully distinguishing beliefs that are reasonable and logical from those that however appealing to our native egocentrism, however much they serve our vested interests, however comfortable or comforting they may be lack adequate evidence or rational foundation to warrant belief. Critical thinking was described by Richard W. Paul as a movement in two waves 1994. The first wave of critical thinking is often referred to as a critical analysis that is clear, rational thinking involving critique. Its details vary amongst those who define it. According to Barry K. Bayer 1995, critical thinking means making clear, reasoned judgments. During the process of critical thinking, ideas should be reasoned, well thought out, and judged. The U.S. National Council for Excellence in Critical Thinking defines critical thinking as the intellectually disciplined process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, or evaluating information gathered from, or generated by, observation, experience, reflection, reasoning, or communication, as a guide to belief and action. Etymology <inaudible> 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 In the term critical thinking, the word critical, GRK Criticos topic. Criticos. Critic derives from the word critic and implies a critique, it identifies the intellectual capacity and the means of judging, of judgment, for judging, and a being able to discern. The intellectual roots of critical thinking are as ancient as its etymology, traceable, ultimately, to the teaching practice and vision of Socrates 2,500 years ago who discovered by a method of probing questioning that people could not rationally justify their confident claims to knowledge. Topic. Definitions Traditionally, critical thinking has been variously defined as follows. The process of actively and skillfully conceptualizing, applying, analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating information to reach an answer or conclusion. Disciplined thinking that is clear, rational, open minded, and informed by evidence. Reasonable, reflective thinking focused on deciding what to believe or do. 
purposeful, self-regulatory judgment which results in interpretation, analysis, evaluation, and inference, as well as explanation of the evidential, conceptual, methodological, criteriological, or contextual considerations upon which that judgment is based." includes a commitment to using reason in the formulation of our beliefs." The skill and propensity to engage in an activity with reflective skepticism McPeck, 1981. Thinking about one's thinking in a manner designed to organize and clarify, raise the efficiency of, and recognize errors and biases in one's own thinking. Critical thinking is not hard thinking nor is it directed at solving problems other than improving one's own thinking. Critical thinking is inward directed with the intent of maximizing the rationality of the thinker. One does not use critical thinking to solve problems. One uses critical thinking to improve one's process of thinking. An appraisal based on careful analytical evaluation. Contemporary critical thinking scholars have expanded these traditional definitions to include qualities, concepts, and processes such as creativity, imagination, discovery, reflection, empathy, connecting knowing, feminist theory, subjectivity, ambiguity, and inconclusiveness. Some definitions of critical thinking exclude these subjective practices. Topic. Logic and rationality The ability to reason logically is a fundamental skill of rational agents, hence the study of the form of correct argumentation is relevant to the study of critical thinking. First wave. Logical thinking consisted of understanding the connections between two concepts or points in thought. It followed a philosophy where the thinker was removed from the train of thought and the connections and the analysis of the connect was devoid of any bias of the thinker. Kerry Walters describes this ideology in his essay Beyond Logicism in Critical Thinking. A logistic approach to critical thinking conveys the message to students that thinking is legitimate only when it conforms to the procedures of informal and, to a lesser extent, formal logic and that the good thinker necessarily aims for styles of examination and appraisal that are analytical, abstract, universal, and objective. This model of thinking has become so entrenched in conventional academic wisdom that many educators accept it as canon. The adoption of these principles parallels themselves with the increasing reliance on a quantitative understanding of the world. In the second wave of critical thinking, as defined by Carrie S. Walters' Rethinking Reason, 1994, p. 1, many authors moved away from the logocentric mode of critical thinking that the first wave privileged, especially in institutions of higher learning. Walters summarizes logicism as the unwarranted assumption that good thinking is reducible to logical thinking. A logistic approach to critical thinking conveys the message to students that thinking is legitimate only when it conforms to the procedures of informal and, to a lesser extent, formal logic and that the good thinker necessarily aims for styles of examination and appraisal that are analytical, abstract, universal, and objective. As the second wave took hold, scholars began to take a more inclusive view of what constituted as critical thinking. Rationality and logic are still widely accepted in many circles as the primary examples of critical thinking. Topic. Deduction, abduction and induction There are three types of logical reasoning informally, two kinds of logical reasoning can be distinguished in addition to formal deduction, induction and abduction. Deduction is the conclusion of a consequence given premises that logically follow by modus ponens. E.g., X is human and all humans have a face so X has a face. Induction is drawing a conclusion from a pattern that is guaranteed by the strictness of the structure to which it applies. E.g., the sum of even integers is even. 2x plus 2y equals 2x plus y, the sum of integers is an integer and x and y are integers, so 2x plus 2y equals 2z where z is an integer, thus 2z is an even integer, so the sum of even integers is even. Abduction is drawing a conclusion using a heuristic that is likely, but not inevitable given some foreknowledge. E.g., I observe sheep in a field, and they appear white from my viewing angle, so sheep are white. Contrast with the deductive statement. Some sheep are white on at least one side. Topic. Critical thinking and rationality 
Carrie S. Walters Rethinking Reason, 1994, argues that rationality demands more than just logical or traditional methods of problem solving and analysis or what he calls the calculus of justification, but also considers cognitive acts such as imagination, conceptual creativity, intuition and insight. p. 63. These functions are focused on discovery, on more abstract processes instead of linear, rules-based approaches to problem-solving. The linear and non-sequential mind must both be engaged in the rational mind, the ability to critically analyze an argument, to dissect structure and components, thesis and reasons, is essential. But so is the ability to be flexible and consider nontraditional alternatives and perspectives. These complementary functions are what allow for critical thinking to be a practice encompassing imagination and intuition in cooperation with traditional modes of deductive inquiry. Functions The list of core critical thinking skills includes observation, interpretation, analysis, inference, evaluation, explanation, and metacognition. According to Reynolds, 2011, an individual or group engaged in a strong way of critical thinking gives due consideration to establish for instance evidence through reality context skills to isolate the problem from context relevant criteria for making the judgment well applicable methods or techniques for forming the judgment applicable theoretical constructs for understanding the problem and the question at hand in addition to possessing strong critical thinking skills one must be disposed to engage problems and decisions using those skills critical thinking employs not only logic but broad intellectual criteria such as clarity credibility accuracy precision relevance depth breadth significance and fairness Topic procedure Critical thinking calls for the ability to, recognize problems, to find workable means for meeting those problems understand the importance of prioritization and order of precedence in problem solving gather and marshal pertinent relevant information recognize unstated assumptions and values comprehend and use language with accuracy, clarity, and discernment interpret data, to appraise evidence and evaluate arguments recognize the existence or non-existence of logical relationships between propositions draw warranted conclusions and generalizations put to test the conclusions and generalizations at which one arrives reconstruct one's patterns of beliefs on the basis of wider experience render accurate judgments about specific things and qualities in everyday life in some a persistent effort to examine any belief or supposed form of knowledge in the light of the evidence that supports or refutes it and the further conclusions to which it tends topic habits or traits of mind the habits of mind that characterize a person strongly disposed toward critical thinking include a desire to follow reason and evidence wherever they may lead, a systematic approach to problem solving, inquisitiveness, even handedness, and confidence in reasoning. According to a definition analysis by Kampf and Bond, 2001, critical thinking involves problem solving, decision making, metacognition, rationality, rational thinking, reasoning, knowledge, intelligence, and also a moral component such as reflective thinking. Critical thinkers therefore need to have reached a level of maturity in their development, possess a certain attitude as well as a set of taught skills. Topic research Edward M. Glazer proposed that the ability to think critically involves three elements, an attitude of being disposed to consider in a thoughtful way the problems and subjects that come within the range of one's experiences knowledge of the methods of logical inquiry and reasoning some skill in applying those methods, educational programs aimed at developing critical thinking in children and adult learners, individually or in group problem solving and decision making contexts, continue to address these same three central elements. The Critical Thinking Project at Human Science Lab, London, is involved in scientific study of all major educational system in prevalence today to assess how the systems are working to promote or impede critical thinking. Contemporary cognitive psychology regards human reasoning as a complex process that is both reactive and reflective. The relationship between critical thinking skills and critical thinking dispositions is an empirical question. Some people have both in abundance, some have skills but not the disposition to use them, some are disposed but lack strong skills, and some have neither. A measure of critical thinking dispositions is the California Measure of Mental Motivation and the California Critical Thinking Dispositions Inventory. 
The CRIT is an alternative measure that examines student beliefs and attitudes about critical thinking. Topic education John Dewey is one of many educational leaders who recognized that a curriculum aimed at building thinking skills would benefit the individual learner, the community, and the entire democracy. Critical thinking is significant in academics due to being significant in learning. Critical thinking is significant in the learning process of internalization, in the construction of basic ideas, principles, and theories inherent in content and critical thinking is significant in the learning process of application, whereby those ideas, principles, and theories are implemented effectively as they become relevant in learners' lives. Each discipline adapts its use of critical thinking concepts and principles. The core concepts are always there, but they are embedded in subject-specific content. For students to learn content, intellectual engagement is crucial. All students must do their own thinking, their own construction of knowledge. Good teachers recognize this and therefore focus on the questions, readings, activities that stimulate the mind to take ownership of key concepts and principles underlying the subject. Historically, teaching of critical thinking focused only on logical procedures such as formal and informal logic. This emphasized to students that good thinking is equivalent to logical thinking. However, a second wave of critical thinking, urges educators to value conventional techniques, meanwhile expanding what it means to be a critical thinker. In 1994, Kerry Walters compiled a conglomeration of sources surpassing this logical restriction to include many different authors' research regarding connected knowing, empathy, gender-sensitive ideals, collaboration, world views, intellectual autonomy, morality and enlightenment. These concepts invite students to incorporate their own perspectives and experiences into their thinking. In the English and Welsh school systems, critical thinking is offered as a subject that 16- to 18-year-olds can take as an A-level. Under the OCR exam board, students can sit two exam papers for the AS, credibility of evidence, and assessing and developing argument. The full advanced GCE is now available. In addition to the two AS units, candidates sit the two papers resolution of dilemmas and critical reasoning the a level tests candidates on their ability to think critically about and analyze arguments on their deductive or inductive validity as well as producing their own arguments it also tests their ability to analyze certain related topics such as credibility and ethical decision making however due to its comparative lack of subject content many universities do not accept it as a main a level for admissions Nevertheless, the AS is often useful in developing reasoning skills, and the full advanced GCE is useful for degree courses in politics, philosophy, history or theology, providing the skills required for critical analysis that are useful, for example, in biblical study. There used to also be an advanced extension award offered in critical thinking in the UK, open to any A-level student regardless of whether they have the critical thinking A-level. Cambridge International Examinations have an A level in thinking skills. From 2008, Assessment and Qualifications Alliance has also been offering an A level critical thinking specification. OCR exam board have also modified theirs for 2008. Many examinations for university entrance set by universities, on top of A level examinations, also include a critical thinking component, such as the LNAT, the UKCAT, the Biomedical Admissions Test, and the Thinking Skills Assessment. In Qatar, critical thinking was offered by Al Barak, an outreach, non-traditional educational program that targets high school students and focuses on a curriculum based on STEM fields. The idea behind Al Barak is to offer high school students the opportunity to connect with the research environment in the Center for Advanced Materials CAM, at Qatar University. Faculty members train and mentor the students and help develop and enhance their critical thinking, problem solving, and teamwork skills. Topic. Efficacy In 1995, a meta-analysis of the literature on teaching effectiveness in higher education was undertaken. The study noted concerns from higher education, politicians, and business that higher education was failing to meet society's requirements for well-educated citizens. It concluded that although faculty may aspire to develop students' thinking skills, in practice they have tended to aim at facts and concepts utilizing lowest levels of cognition, rather than developing intellect or values. 
In a more recent meta analysis, researchers reviewed 341 quasi or true experimental studies, all of which used some form of standardized critical thinking measure to assess the outcome variable. The authors describe the various methodological approaches and attempt to categorize the differing assessment tools, which include standardized tests and second source measures, tests developed by teachers, tests developed by researchers, and tests developed by teachers who also serve the role as the researcher. The results emphasized the need for exposing students to real-world problems and the importance in encouraging open dialogue within a supportive environment. Effective strategies for teaching critical thinking are thought to be possible in a wide variety of educational settings. One attempt to assess the humanities' role in teaching critical thinking and reducing belief in pseudoscientific claims was made at North Carolina State University. Some success was noted and the researchers emphasized the value of the humanities in providing the skills to evaluate current events and qualitative data in context. Scott Lilienfeld notes that there is some evidence to suggest that basic critical thinking skills might be successfully taught to children at a younger age than previously thought. Topic: Importance in academia. Critical thinking is an important element of all professional fields and academic disciplines by referencing their respective sets of permissible questions, evidence sources, criteria, etc. Within the framework of scientific skepticism, the process of critical thinking involves the careful acquisition and interpretation of information and use of it to reach a well-justified conclusion. The concepts and principles of critical thinking can be applied to any context or case but only by reflecting upon the nature of that application. Critical thinking forms, therefore, a system of related, and overlapping, modes of thought such as anthropological thinking, sociological thinking, historical thinking, political thinking, psychological thinking, philosophical thinking, mathematical thinking, chemical thinking, biological thinking, ecological thinking, legal thinking, ethical thinking, musical thinking, thinking like a painter, sculptor, engineer, business person, etc. In other words, though critical thinking principles are universal, their application to disciplines requires a process of reflective contextualization. Critical thinking is considered important in the academic fields because it enables one to analyze, evaluate, explain, and restructure their thinking, thereby decreasing the risk of adopting, acting on, or thinking with, a false belief. However, even with knowledge of the methods of logical inquiry and reasoning, mistakes can happen due to a thinker's inability to apply the methods or because of character traits such as egocentrism. Critical thinking includes identification of prejudice, bias, propaganda, self-deception, distortion, misinformation, etc. Given research in cognitive psychology, some educators believe that schools should focus on teaching their students critical thinking skills and cultivation of intellectual traits. Critical thinking skills can be used to help nurses during the assessment process. Through the use of critical thinking, nurses can question, evaluate, and reconstruct the nursing care process by challenging the established theory and practice. Critical thinking skills can help nurses problem-solve, reflect, and make a conclusive decision about the current situation they face. Critical thinking creates new possibilities for the development of the nursing knowledge due to the socio-cultural, environmental, and political issues that are affecting healthcare delivery, it would be helpful to embody new techniques in nursing. Nurses can also engage their critical thinking skills through the Socratic method of dialogue and reflection. This practice standard is even part of some regulatory organizations such as the College of Nurses of Ontario, Professional Standards for Continuing Competencies 2006. It requires nurses to engage in reflective practice and keep records of this continued professional development for possible review by the college. Critical thinking is also considered important for human rights education for toleration. The Declaration of Principles on Tolerance adopted by UNESCO in 1995 affirms that "...education for tolerance could aim at countering factors that lead to fear and exclusion of others, and could help young people to develop capacities for independent judgment, critical thinking and ethical reasoning." Critical thinking is used as a way of deciding whether a claim is true, partially true, or false. It is a tool by which one can come about reasoned conclusions based on a reasoned process. Topic. In computer-mediated communication 
The advent and rising popularity of online courses has prompted some to ask if Computer Mediated Communication CMC promotes, hinders, or has no effect on the amount and quality of critical thinking in a course relative to face-to-face -face communication. There is some evidence to suggest a fourth, more nuanced possibility, that CMC may promote some aspects of critical thinking but hinder others. For example, Giller et al. 2008 found that, relative to face-to-face -face discourse, online discourse featured more justifications, while face-to-face -face discourse featured more instances of students expanding on what others had said. The increase in justifications may be due to the asynchronous nature of online discussions, while the increase in expanding comments may be due to the spontaneity of real-time discussion. Newman et al. 1995 showed similar differential effects. They found that while CMC boasted more important statements and linking of ideas, it lacked novelty. The authors suggest that this may be due to difficulties participating in a brainstorming-style activity in an asynchronous environment. Rather, the asynchrony may promote users to put forth considered, thought-out contributions. Researchers assessing critical thinking in online discussion forums often employ a technique called content analysis, where the text of online discourse or the transcription of face-to-face -face discourse is systematically coded for different kinds of statements relating to critical thinking. For example, a statement might be coded as discuss ambiguities to clear them up or welcoming outside knowledge as positive indicators of critical thinking. Conversely, statements reflecting poor critical thinking may be labeled as sticking to prejudice or assumptions or squashing attempts to bring in outside knowledge. The frequency of these codes in CMC and face-to-face -face discourse can be compared to draw conclusions about the quality of critical thinking. Searching for evidence of critical thinking in discourse has roots in a definition of critical thinking put forth by Kuhn 1991, which emphasizes the social nature of discussion and knowledge construction. There is limited research on the role of social experience in critical thinking development, but there is some evidence to suggest it is an important factor. For example, research has shown that three- to four-year-old children can discern, to some extent, the differential creditability and expertise of individuals. Further evidence for the impact of social experience on the development of critical thinking skills comes from work that found that 6- to 7-year-olds from China have similar levels of skepticism to 10- and 11-year-olds in the United States. If the development of critical thinking skills was solely due to maturation, it is unlikely we would see such dramatic differences across cultures. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Cedarblom, J. and Powelson, D. W. 2006, Critical Reasoning, Understanding and Criticizing Arguments and Theories, 6th EDN, Belmont, C. A., Thomson Wadsworth. College of Nurses of Ontario Professional Standards 2006 Continuing Competencies Damer, T. Edward, 2005 Attacking Faulty Reasoning, 6th edition, Wadsworth. ISBN 0-534-60516-8 Dower, Francis Watanabe. Critical Thinking, An Introduction to Reasoning, 1989, ISBN 978-0-19-504884-1 Facione, P. 2007. Critical Thinking, What It Is and Why It Counts 2007 Update Fisher, Alec and Scriven, Michael, 1997 Critical Thinking, Its Definition and Assessment, Center for Research in Critical Thinking, UK, Edge Press, US. ISBN 0-9531796-0-5 Hamby, B.W. 2007 The Philosophy of Anything, Critical Thinking in Context. Kendall Hunt Publishing Company, Dubuque, Iowa. ISBN 978-0-7575-4724-9 Vincent F. Hendricks, 2005, Thought 2 Talk, A Crash Course in Reflection and Expression, New York, Automatic Press, VIP. ISBN 87-991013-7-8 Kompf, M., and Bond, R. 2001. Critical Reflection in Adult Education. In T. Bererstein and M. Kampf, eds., The Craft of Teaching Adults, pp. 21-38. Toronto, On, Irwin. McPeck, J. Thoughts on Subject Specificity. In S. Norris, ed., The Generalizability of Critical Thinking, pp. 198-205. New York, Teachers College Press. Moore, Brooke Noel and Parker, Richard, 2012, Critical Thinking, 10th ed. Published by McGraw-Hill. ISBN 0-07-803828-6. Mulnix, J.W. 2010. Thinking Critically About Critical Thinking. 
Educational Philosophy and Theory, 44 to 464 minus 479. Doi 10.1111/j.1469 to 5812.2010.00673x. Paul R. 1982. Teaching Critical Thinking in the Strong Sense: A Focus on Self-Deception, World Views, and a Dialectical Mode of Analysis. Informal Logic Newsletter, 4, 2, 2 to 7. Paul, Richard, 1995, Critical Thinking, How to Prepare Students for a Rapidly Changing World, 4th ed. Foundation for Critical Thinking. ISBN 0-944583-09-1. Paul, Richard and Elder, Linda, 2006, Critical Thinking Tools for Taking Charge of Your Learning and Your Life, New Jersey, Prentice Hall Publishing. ISBN 0-13-114962-8. Paul, Richard, Elder, Linda, 2002, Critical Thinking, Tools for Taking Charge of Your Professional and Personal Life. Published by Financial Times Prentice Hall. ISBN 0-13-064760-8. Pavlidis, Pericles, 2010. Critical Thinking as Dialectics, a Hegelian Marxist Approach. Journal for Critical Education Policy Studies, 8 2. Sagan, Carl, 1995. The Demon Haunted World Science as a Candle in the Dark. Ballantine Books. ISBN 0 345 40946 9. Theodore Schick and Louis Vaughn. How to Think About Weird Things Critical Thinking for a New Age. 2010. ISBN 0 7674 2048 9. Twardy, Charles R. 2003. Argument Maps Improve Critical Thinking. Teaching Philosophy 27 to 2 June 2004. Van den Brink Budgen, R. 2010. Critical Thinking for Students: How to Books. ISBN 9781845283865. White, J. 2003. Bad Thoughts: A Guide to Clear Thinking. Corvo. ISBN 0-9543255-3-2. Zigarnik, B. V. 1927. On Finished and Unfinished Tasks. In English translation edited by Willis D. Ellis, with an introduction by Kurt Kafka, 1997. A Source Book of Gestalt Psychology XIV, 403p, IL. 22 CM Highland, NY, Gestalt Journal Press. This Gestalt Journal Press edition is a verbatim reprint of the book as originally published in 1938. T.P. Verso. ISBN 9780939266000. Hall, Richard, 1998. External links Media related to critical thinking at Wikimedia Commons, Quotations related to critical thinking at Wikiquote. Zalta, Edward N. Ed. Critical Thinking. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Zalta, Edward N. Ed. Informal Logic. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Critical Thinking at Philpapers Critical Thinking at the Indiana Philosophy Ontology Project Critical Thinking at Curly Critical Thinking, What Is It Good For? In Fact, What Is It? by Howard Gabenish, Skeptical Inquirer Magazine. Glossary of Critical Thinking Terms Critical Thinking Web